Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Fusion 360 Live. Uh, my name is Brad Tallis from Autodesk and today's topic I'm going to be talking about bringing in uh, like DWG, DXF files and even images into Fusion to help you create a 3D model. Now with all three of those methods there's pros and cons with each of them and I'm going to go through those in today's live stream. So let's dive right in. Okay, so I'm actually gonna start in, uh, in AutoCAD here. So you'll see I have AutoCAD up. If, actually, I lied. Let me, let me back up a, a step here. I'm going to import in um, a file, okay? So I want to upload a DWG file into Fusion. So I'm gonna come in here and select, and let's just do a search for DWG. And you'll notice I have this DP942 drawing um, it's about 1300 kilobytes. I want to upload this into Fusion. So I'll say upload. It takes a couple moments to uh, bring it into my project. But what you're going to notice here is one of the cons with the DWG format. Okay. Um, and so once this is done uploading, give it just another moment here. I'll go ahead and, and open this guy up. So you'll see once the status is done, it'll say complete. And I'll go ahead and open this file. And you can see that it's thinking, and ta-da, nothing happened. You'll notice I don't have any sketches or anything like that. And it, it says that it's opened up this drawing. So this is one of those issues. And, and the reason I'm doing this live stream, in fact, I actually helped a, a customer this morning with this exact same situation. They uh, brought in a DWG file and nothing showed up. Now the reason for that, and I'm not gonna get too deep into it, um, is a little bit of history uh, with AutoCAD. Um, they have what's called model space and paper space. And, um, we need to basically take all of the, the sketches, the drawings, etc., and put it in one space, which is going to be the, uh, the paper space. So let me show you how to do that. So with a DWG, we're going to have to use AutoCAD. So you can kind of see here I'm in AutoCAD right now, and I've already loaded up that DP942 drawing. So this is that exact same drawing, and you can see that it came into AutoCAD uh, with no problems. This is what I was expecting to see in Fusion. So to push it out into one space, like for example the paper space, we're gonna have to run a command called export layout. So I'm gonna just start typing in EX and you can see the command right here. And I'm gonna pause here for a moment so you can all see what the command is. But it's called export layout. And what this is gonna do is it's going to basically export the layout into a model space drawing. You can see it right across the top right here. So I can give it a new name. So I'll call this, um, you know, live stream demo or something like that. It's still going to be a DWG, but it's going to save that out into the model space. Okay. So now when I go into here and I say upload, I'll select the file, I'll do the DWG search again. Here's my live stream demo. I'll go ahead and upload that guy. Shouldn't take as long, it's a little bit smaller file. And while it's doing that, I'm gonna talk a little bit. So the, so the one con with this is you do have to have AutoCAD. I've done some research, um, and from what I've seen, AutoCAD is the only tool out there that does this export layout. Um, I know there's DWG viewers and all that kind of stuff, and I couldn't find anything out there that does this layout. Okay, so let me jump back in here. Um, now I have this live stream demo. Let's go ahead and open this and see what we get. Now this time, you'll notice that we see the result that I was hoping for. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do um, is I'm actually going to cancel out really quick. 
close both of these guys out. I'm going to just save an empty session. So I have a whole new session. I'm just going to go ahead and say save. And let's just call this, uh, you know, demo or something. So now I have a file called demo. And the reason I did this is now I can insert this drawing into this file. Okay, so I can come in here and say insert into current design. And what that's going to do is it's going to bring that in um, into this demo file. Okay, so I have a top view, a front view, a side view, an isometric view it looks like. I want to orient this so it makes a little bit of sense. And you can see our origin right here if I go ahead and turn that on. So I'm going to line up the center of this top view with my 0, 0, 0. So you can see right now I'm in the move copy command. It comes up automatically. And I'm going to go point to point. It's this little icon right here. And what that does is allows me to click on a point like so. And then I'm going to go over to this point here and watch what it does. It moves that whole drawing right to zero 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 and I'll say okay and now I have this in my my uh, part here my session I should say now you'll notice that it has a link icon that means it's dynamically linked to that drawing and what I'm going to be doing today I don't need it to be linked so I'm going to come in here and say break link and you'll see that that chain link goes away I'll go ahead and expand this open and we can see all of the stuff that came in. So for example, um, if I hit the little eyeballs, you can see that we can turn off any of these views. Okay. Then you also see we have like, for example, the border, the title block, and then these are all your like um, dashed lines, hatch lines, etc. So I don't want the title block or any of those dashed lines or center lines or anything like that. So I'm going to just select them and say delete. And it says it's referenced by other features. Do you sure you want to delete? I'm going to say yes. So I'm going to go ahead and delete. And you can see that we kind of cleaned that up. In fact, what I'm going to do is all I really want is that top view right there, which I can see is that guy. So I'm going to select these other three and do the same thing. I'm going to say delete. And now I have just my top view in my session. Okay, so I'm going to do the exact same thing again multiple times. I now have my top view. I want to bring in my front view and my side view. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to say insert into current design and you'll see it'll bring it back in. But this time I want to deal with the front view. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate that 90 degrees which you can kind of see right there. And here's a cool little trick. I want to move this to be right on top of this other part. So again, I'm going to say point to point. And I'm going to maybe pick like this lower right point or a lower left point. Doesn't really matter. Something that I can reference. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that point right there. And then notice what happens when I hover over this edge. You can see that there's a start point, a mid point, and an end point. So you can kind of see the start, mid, and end. Well, I want this to basically slice right through the middle, so I'm going to just click on that little triangle right there, and it's going to move it from one point to that middle of that line. I'll say OK. You can kind of see what we're doing here. We're kind of building up this image of this part. Now, again, pretty much the exact same thing. I'm going to break the link. I'll expand this open. I'll get rid of all the stuff that I don't need. So I'm going to select it and hit delete. And then I'll find out which. So this very first one is my front view. So I can get rid of these other three views. So I'm just selecting them. I can either hit the delete key on my keyboard. Or I can come in here and say delete right from the menu. Okay. So now I have my top, my front. Let's go one more time. I'll say insert into current design. This time I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees up. And it's kind of hard to see. It's kind of buried in there. 90 degrees to the right. Like so. Okay. 
And then I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'll say point to point. And maybe I'll grab the middle of this line. So I'm just going to click on that little triangle you see right there. And then I'll click on that middle point right there. And it's going to bring that drawing and put it right where it needs to be. So you can kind of see looking at it from the side, looking at it from the front, and looking at it from the top. Okay, so it's where it needs to be and I'll clean this up. Now you don't have to clean it up, but I highly recommend that you do because it just simplifies things, it speeds things up. So let's go ahead and delete those guys and then I'll find out which view. So it looks like it's this last view is the one I want to keep. So I'll just go ahead and delete those views and I'm left with this representation so you can kind of see what it looks like okay so a couple a couple things I want to review here so this was a DWG file format so I might have gotten this from a customer I might have downloaded it um, you know online or something like that um, if you're getting this from a customer and you try and open it up in diffusion and you don't see anything I highly recommend that you ask them to do that export layout in AutoCAD, um, if they have AutoCAD, um, before they send it to you. Um, second, if you have AutoCAD, you can just do that export layout. Um, what we're doing now is we're going to take these three views and use them to build our 3D model. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on this profile, and you'll notice it recognizes everything as profiles, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more when we get into DXF, but I'm going to right click and say extrude. So I'm not having to recreate or redraw any of the profiles, which I think is awesome. Okay, well I know this is symmetric, so I'm going to come in here and say symmetric. I'm going to say whole length, and if we look at our drawing here, I need it to come to this edge right here. And if I drag, I can't hover over it or anything like that. I can't snap to it. I can't click on it. I'm trying to click on it. You'll notice that it's not snapping to that edge. So here is one of my favorite tips. In the distance, there's this little down arrow, and you've heard me talk about the re-anchor command. This is for 3D. We also have this measure command, and this is for 2D. So I'm going to say measure and check this out. I can hover over different elements and it's going to capture that length. So watch what happens when I click on that edge. It is now the exact right size. You can kind of see we measured the length of that edge and it made the extrusion that length. So really powerful tip there. So I'm going to say OK. Now you'll notice it turned my sketch off, so all I have to do is um, expand, open my sketches here. Let me expand these open, and you'll see we have visible and hidden lines. So I'm just going to turn on my visible again. There we go. Okay, let's take a look at maybe these little feet right here. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to say extrude, symmetric start to drag. I, I like to drag to kind of see what's going on. We'll do the whole length. And let's do both of them at the same time. Oops, wrong button. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. Um, so I need to know exact, you know, how far to go, right? So I'm going to come in here and say measure. I'll click on that edge and it's going to snap or, or make the distance correct for the length of that edge. I'll say OK, and we now have the start of our shape. OK, now next we have this circular shape, and it actually exists up here. But you'll notice that my sketch is way down here. So here is a cool tip. I'll click on this guy, I'll say extrude, and you'll notice if I start to extrude up, it's starting way down here. Okay. Well, right here in my extrude menu, we have this start, and you can see that it's starting on the profile plane. 
Well, I can come in here and say, I want to start from an offset plane, like a certain distance, or I can even say from object. And that's what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna say from object, what's the object? And I'm gonna click on this top face right here and watch what it does. <laughs> it's using this profile, but it's starting the sketch on the top of my part. And again, I don't know how far I need to go, so I'll come in here and say measure. I'll click on that edge, and sure enough, it extrudes the correct length, and it's gonna join it together. Now, the only drawback with this is if we look down the part, you'll notice that you know this used to be a, a solid face, and it still is, but we want the hole to go all the way through. So all I have to do is select that face and say delete, and it's gonna delete that face so we're looking through, and it's still a solid model. We're still good there, okay? That delete is kind of like a direct modeling feature where it basically removed um, that face that we selected, and there we go. Okay, let me expand, open, make sure I got all my sketches. Let's turn this guy back on because I noticed there's some holes down here. So again, not having to recreate any of the geometry. And that's what I really like about this because anytime I recreate stuff, I could potentially induce error into my design. So let's just go ahead and, and say, let's um, extrude all through the part. I'll say okay. We now have those holes through there. Everything is looking pretty good. The only thing I notice now is there's a curve right here. So that means that these edges, these small little edges right here are filleted. So I'm gonna click on that edge. I'll right mouse click and say fill it. But once again, I don't know how large they're supposed to be. So I'm gonna come in here and say measure. I can click on that and it's, it kind of rotates so you can kind of see a little bit better. I can click on this sketch right here and it's going to measure what that radius is and it's going to make that the same for that fillet. And I'll go ahead and select these other edges all at the same time. One, two, three, four. We'll say OK. And I'll go ahead and turn off these um, sketches really quick. And just like that, I was able to bring in a DWG file and use it to create a new body. Um, you know, it took a little bit of time to kind of clean things up, but I didn't have to redraw anything. I was able to use the existing DWG file format. Okay, so um, personal preference, if you can get the file as a DWG, I would recommend that over a DXF, and you're going to see why here in just a moment. Um, however, the the con with that is that it has to be an exported layout. So um, if you want to take any notes from today, just write down export layout. Uh, that's how you uh, get it to show up correctly in Fusion. So now let's take a look at DXF files, okay? Now, um, the thing with DXF files is it's an approximation, um, and let me bring up a drawing here really quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and under the insert menu, you can see that we can insert a DXF, okay? You don't see DWG over here. That's why I had to upload my DWG drawing into the project. But with um, DXF files, I can bring them right in using this insert. So I'm gonna say insert DXF, I'm just going to click, let's just do like the top plane, and then it says select DXF file. So I'm going to go ahead and um, bring in this pipe clamp DXF file. Now my icons might look different than yours because I have different tools that open up DXF files, etc. So notice it's taking some time. I hit, I hit OK and it's sitting there thinking and thinking, and this is one of the cons with DXF files is they are pretty, what I call heavy. And you'll see here what I mean by that in just a moment. You'll also notice I get a warning. The selected DXF does not contain unit information. 
So I, and you'll notice there's no dimensions on this DXF file. So how do I know that one inch is one inch and all that kind of stuff? I do have the ability to change what units, um, if you know, if I knew this was created in millimeters, I could set it to millimeters and it would come in one to one. If I knew it was created in inches, I could set it to inch and it would come in one to one. So that's one of the nice things about this. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just say okay. I'm not going to cover the rest of this kind of stuff, but you'll notice it has one layer <laughs> in this case. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and say okay. Now again, I've hit okay. And you'll notice that it's going and doing this little green progress bar down at the bottom. It's analyzing my sketch and making sure that everything is correct. And you notice it's even doing a compute and an update graphic. So to me, DXF files are a little bit slower. Okay, And this is what I was talking about. Watch what happens. I'm going to go ahead and edit this sketch. Watch what happens when I select just this top view. Okay, Again, it's thinking, but notice all of these little dots that appear. And what it's basically doing is it's showing a dot on every end point of a line. So you can see there's one there and one there for the center mark. There's one there and one there for the little center of the center mark. But notice the circle and all of these other circles. It's basically broken down into individual little segments. So if I click right there, you'll see that it does not select the whole circle. It only selects a segment. So DXF files, I think, are much more difficult to manage, to deal with. In fact, a lot of times I'll turn these into construction geometry and redraw, recreate a, a real circle that goes, you know, all the way across, for example, that's all one object instead of a whole bunch of individual tiny t little lines, okay? So that is one of the cons with DXF files is that it's basically just a whole bunch of line segments. Uh, one of the other cons with DXF files is sometimes they don't come in very cleanly and I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. This great looking drawing actually did not come in perfect and we're gonna have to fix that. Um, now there's a lot of DXF files out on the web that are really cool, which I'm gonna show you here for uh, in a minute. For example, if you have like a plasma cutter or laser cutter or whatever. There's really cool um, things you can download, but they're typically DXF file format. If you have a choice, I would recommend SVG, Scalable Vector um, Graphics, I think is what it stands for. Those are nice, smooth splines. It's not broken up into little individual pieces. So if you can, I would recommend SVG, um, but there will be a lot of cases where you're kind of stuck with just a DXF. Now here's what I was talking about. Notice how everything's kind of filled in. Everything looks good. These are valid profiles, but you'll notice that it's white right here. But that looks like a valid profile. Why is it not shaded in? Okay, so we're going to talk about that. Now because this is such a heavy file, I'm going to clean it up. I'm only going to work with this uh, section view. So I'm going to go ahead and select some of these other views and just delete them out of my sketch because I don't want it to have to recalculate every single edge every single time. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So you can kind of see again it's thinking. Um, it'll go ahead and delete those out of there and then I'll delete um, these other views that I don't need. So I'm going to select those view, that view, and this other view up here. And I apologize, they're painting my house right now, so you might hear some banging and some noise coming through the microphone. Um, hopefully not too bad. Okay, um, looking over at the chat, looks like Angelo's been pretty busy answering questions. I appreciate that. Hopefully you're all finding this um, topic useful. Like I said, I found it ironic that uh, um, I actually helped a customer this morning with this exact issue. So. Um, it probably happens more often than we know about. Okay, so I want to fix this area here. I'm going to go ahead and minimize that guy. 
Um, and I'm, I'm curious, why is it not shaded? Well, here's a cool tip, okay? I'm going to go into my tools. Uh, actually, let me I'll back up. I'll show you what we're gonna do here in a second. Under the inspect menu, you'll notice I have something here called check sketch, okay? And I'm gonna show you how this works and then I'm gonna show you how you can get this because it's not part of the Fusion product out of the box. So I'm gonna say check sketch and watch what it does. It puts all these little balls all around the part. Now, what is that? Well, it's showing endpoints. Well, let's zoom up, for example, on this one right here. And as I get closer and closer, you'll actually notice that there's two of them and they're not connected. So this is the exact reason why it's not a closed sketch. If I zoom out, let me take a look at this one down here. I'm gonna zoom up a little bit. Now this one does look closed, but what it's probably showing, sure enough, that this line kind of overlaps this other line. So instead of endpoint to endpoint, they're kind of overlapping. Now that's okay in, in Fusion. In other CAD systems, that would fail. Um, let's take a look at this one over here. And in this example, you'll notice that there's actually a gap. So again, it's not a closed profile. So that plugin, which is called Check Sketch, is really handy. And I'm going to show you how to get it. Now there's, again, some pros and cons with this. Um, what I typically do is I kind of look at the area that the, there was the issue and then I do a screen capture. Um, so I don't have to keep running the check sketch over and over again because you can see as soon as I clicked out, it all those um, markers went away. Okay, so instead of having to come in here and you know check sketch over again, I'll just do a screen capture and I know that there's issues here, 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 and here, for example, okay? So I highly recommend doing this screen capture just so you have something to reference. Okay, so how do you get this? Well, under your Tools tab, there's a menu called Add-ins. I'm gonna go ahead and go to Fusion 360 App Store. And what that does, and I just brought it up on the wrong screen here. Let me bring it over here, okay? it brings up our app store. And you can see a bunch of different apps in here, such as a helical gear generator, a bills of material thing, um, a slicer, if you wanna slice a 3D model into like thin pieces of wood or cardboard, etc. And you'll notice most popular Autodesk apps, Sketch Checker. Or you could do a search for, I'm just gonna do a search for Sketch and it's gonna show all of the different apps that have to do with sketching. So for example, you know, DXF Spline to Polyline, that looks pretty interesting. Save as SVG, Airfoil Generator. So there's a lot of stuff, text on Arc. I know a lot of you have been asking about that. So <laughs> kind of a cool plugin right there that somebody wrote. So all you have to do is click on, you know, Sketch Checker and it tells you uh, whether you're Mac OS or Win, so 64, so I'm gonna go to Windows, and then I just hit Download. Now I'm not gonna do it, it just downloads it and adds it into Fusion. And so next time you restart Fusion, you'll have to restart Fusion to, to see it, but you'll see this check sketch. So really, really handy. Okay, so how do we fix this? Well, I know one of the issues was right here, okay? And I want to keep this line vertical, so I'm going to, let me go back into my sketch menu. I'm going to say coincident, and I want to keep this line. So I have a little saying called click to keep. It's like a little rhyme. So I'm going to click to keep that point, and then I'll select this other one, and you'll see how it moved that line ever so slightly to join that together, okay? Um, this one, it was overlapping, that was fine. Let me just oops, zoom out a little bit. We knew that there was a gap over here, so I'll do the exact same thing. I'll 
click one point, click another point, and it's going to extend that over and notice what happened. It instantly shaded, showing me that I've now closed that profile. Okay. So that little inspect check sketch is a great way to figure out why there's these little tiny gaps. And again, like I said, with DXF file formats, it, it, there seems to always be little tiny gaps um, just for like the resolution because it's taking a nice smooth curve and breaking it down into these chunky lines. Your other line, in fact, I'm going to show you here in a second, doesn't touch it anymore. Um, in fact, here's a prime example. Why is this region not shaded in? And if we zoom up over here, we can see that this nice curve is actually just a bunch of individual lines, right? So I might come in here and say I want um, that line and that point to be coincident, and sure enough, it now reaches all the way. Or, let me undo, I could come in here and use the command um, extend. And you'll notice I just kind of hover over this line a little bit. And it's going to extend to that edge. Okay. Okay, let's take this to the next level. Um, I'm going to bring in a new design. Um, I'll come in here and say, uh, oops, sorry, insert DXF. I'll do it on the top face again. Select my DXF. This is one that I downloaded off of a web page somewhere, and you'll see when it comes in, it's a really cool graphic. It's like a, a moose or something like that. Um, again, it's going to take some time because this is pretty heavy. <laughs> Lots of edges and curves and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'll go ahead again. Apologize for the banging. <laughs> Hopefully, it's not going to be too bad here. Um, so I'm just going to kind of move it sort of to the center there, and say okay. Okay. Again, it's thinking. Now you'll notice in this example, if I zoom up here, some of the patches are shaded in with you know that tan color but the rest of the moose and this patch here are not. So there's something wrong with this particular profile, okay? Now I showed um, using the check sketch, but on something this complex, I would probably not use it because it would put those little tiny balls on all of the little tiny edges, for example. It might get kind of crazy. So here's another tip that I use I'm going to say edit sketch and let's start small. Let's just take a look at this patch right here. I'm just going to draw a line that kind of cuts through half of it like so and say okay. Now I was hoping to see one half of this shade. So there must be more than one issue wrong with this patch. So let me go ahead and draw another line maybe over here and I'm kind of breaking it down into chunks. And there we go, check it out. This shaded, so I know that there's nothing wrong between these two lines. In fact, I could drag this line, let's drag it to the left a little bit, and that filled in, so this did not, so there must be something wrong with this little region right here. And as I zoom up, I kind of think I see, sure enough, I see a little tiny gap, I mean a little tiny microscopic gap right there. And this time instead of doing constraints or whatever, because it's so tiny, I might just fill that in with a line. I'm just going to put um, a line at one corner, like, so you can kind of see how it snaps to it. And then I'll do the line to the other point, I'm getting a little bit of delay here, there we go. And you can kind of see how it's snapping automatically and sure enough it's shaded in with that show profile option and so I know that this section is now good okay so I'll go ahead and delete that line now there's something over here let me break maybe this into uh, thirds or something so I'm just gonna do something like that 
that shaded in so I know that there's something wrong in this region and as I zoom up sure enough you can kind of see it and, and the more you do this the more you'll kind of recognize um, where the potential issues are so I'll just do another just a quick line segment because it's so short I don't need to do a spline or anything like that so let's just do something like so good it looks like it's shaded in so I'll zoom back out and I've fixed that area and all I have to do now is just remove um, those lines so it's kind of a quick way to figure out where's the problems and obviously there's something wrong with the big moose so I'm just gonna <laughs> slice them in half let's just do something like this and see what happens sure enough that totally shades so we're good to go there maybe I'll do something kind of across like this see what happens um, but again notice how slow it is in fact it's, it's probably auto saving now um, let me go back sorry <laughs> it's thinking bring fuse back up there we go um, so you can see that it's shaded that whole area um, in fact it took so much memory it kicked me out into <laughs> my web page so I know that most of the moose is good it's just something in the head so let me go ahead and maybe draw something across here maybe let's just see what happens okay so that all shaded so it's got to be somewhere in here okay so and just to save some time um, I'm gonna zoom up and sure enough I see it right there so I could keep breaking it down into smaller pieces for example now that I know it's between there and there I might you know create a line that goes across something like this and we should hopefully see the the mouth area um, shade in <laughs> so let's see what happens here but again here's you can kind of see why I don't like to work with DXF files all that often is just how long it takes it's trying to calculate um, all of these edges and all those points those individual lines etc so it can take some time okay so the last thing I need to do is just basically create a line that goes from there to there and sure enough that shaded and I know now that my um, moose is a valid profile I'll go ahead and delete these lines that I don't need again notice just moving my mouse it's trying to catch to radiuses and points and all this kind of stuff you can kind of see how heavy I use the term heavy this model is because of all the individual little segments but I should now be able to turn this into um, you know maybe like a plasma cut um, plaque or something like that let's just go you know 0.05 in this case or something and I was able to bring in a DXF file and like I said I got this off of a web page somewhere so um, and there's lots of files out there but you might have to work with them to fix them okay Okay, this last segment I'm going to talk about is a little bit different um, than using DWG and DXF files. It's actually using um, when you don't have either, when you don't have a DWG or a DXF and you want to create a part. And Jamie kind of showed a little bit about this in the last live stream that, we, that he did um, where he was using Freeform and he brought in a sketch. And I'm going to do the exact same thing to kind of show you how you can create stuff very quickly and very easily using just pencil sketches or napkin sketches. So I'm gonna come in here and instead of inserting a DXF, I'm gonna insert a canvas. So I'm gonna say canvas. I'm just gonna click on this front face and it's asking for an image. Well, I have an image, it's a mouthwash bottle that I downloaded off of the web I'm just going to kind of bring this a little bit bigger and I notice the text is backwards so I'm going to say horizontal flip so I have to give credit to, to Juan Carlos Barquet I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly um, uh, he's the one that sketched this I just downloaded it off of the web but I want to make sure I give him credit for this what this allows me to do is I'm basically bringing in a, a napkin sketch and I can change the opacity of this so I'm going to maybe around 50 I'll make sure display through is turned on. I'm just going to go ahead and say okay. 
Now, the drawback with this is I have no idea what size this is, and there's no dimensions on here or anything like that. But check this out. I'm going to go into Canvas, right click, and say Calibrate. Okay. And what this is going to allow me to do is I can click, for example, the top of the bottle and the bottom of the bottle, as close as I can get. And it says that it's one and a half inches. Well, I know that the finished product, it's going to be seven inches tall. So I'm going to hit enter and you'll see that my image is scaled up larger. Okay. So now from the top of the bottle to the bottom of the bottle is seven inches. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of put it in the right spot. So I'm going to come in here and say edit canvas. I'm just going to drag this over and you can kind of see my, my zero, zero point is right here in the middle. So I might just kind of line up um, the top of the bottle and kind of the center of the bottle with that zero, zero. Maybe just move it over ever so slightly so you can kind of tweak with that a little bit. I'll zoom up, maybe move it up a little bit. And again, this is mostly for approximation, like these lines aren't perfectly straight or anything like that, but I now have the front of the bottle right at zero, zero. Okay. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing again. I'll just come in here and say, insert canvas. Let's do it on the side view and I'll use this image. Now, what I typically do um, just to simplify things is I tend to only have one view um, instead of all of them like this, I'll tend to have just one view and I'll bring in a side view, I'll bring in a top view, I'll bring in a right view, but this is all the same image. I'm just going to go ahead and say OK. And I'm going to do this the calibrate again. OK, so I'll come in here and click on the top and the bottom. And I'll say 7 and it scales it up. And then I'll go ahead and move the uh, side view to my kind of my zero zero right there. So I'm just going to kind of move that over. I might zoom up just a little bit and so I can kind of tweak with it. Now again, this is mostly approximation, so it's not exact. And I would say that's probably one of the cons with this method is, you know, I basically clicking on a pencil line and a pencil line saying, hey, that's seven inches long. It could be 7.003. And this other one could be 7.1 or something like that, right? Um, so it's as close as it can get, but you can kind of see we're doing pretty much the same thing that we did with our very first model when I brought in those DWG files. We're basically kind of going to use this to design our part. So let's do that one more time. Insert canvas on this top view. I'll select that same image. Scale it up just a little bit so I can kind of see what's going on. Maybe a little bit larger here. Um, looking at the top view, I'll calibrate that. And a, a good tip is the farther you can calibrate, like I wouldn't want to go from here to here and say that's a quarter of an inch. The farther you can calibrate, the more accurate it's going to be. So I'm going to do like top to bottom, let's just say seven. And then I will move that kind of to the center. Let me zoom up a little bit. I actually got pretty close. I'll just leave it right there. And I'll say OK. OK, so now I have a front view. I have, and it's kind of hard to see, but a side view. And I have a top view. Now, that's like I mentioned earlier, um, I usually get rid of all of these other views when I'm bringing these in, um, you know, using like a graphics program or something like that. Um, but in this case, we're just going to leave it the way it is. But now I can come in and say, for example, let's create a form and let's just start with a box. And let's just use these sketches as reference. So I'm going to go like so and go to the width and then I'll go to the height that I want, like so. Get pretty close, like that. Okay, and then I might look at the front view and drag this guy down. I'm, I'm not teaching how to do T-splines like Jamie did. I'm just kind of showing the method of bringing in um, images to help you with your design. So I might do like, for example, seven segments like so. And now you can see we kind of have the overall shape of what this is going to look like. 
And then this is where it really kind of comes in. I think it's pretty fun. I'm going to add some symmetry. Um, let me do, oops. Let me try like that face and that face. There we go. Um, why is it saying it can't do it? Oh, it already has symmetry. I apologize. <laughs> I, I wanted symmetry, but I already had it, so that's kind of cool. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, um, just for fun, so you can kind of see how fast and how easy this is, I'm just going to select a couple edges. Um, let me do that guy. And I'm going to crease those edges, like so. And using these sketches, I can now come in here and say, for example, I want to crease that edge. And maybe I want to move um, this edge down. So I'm just going to drag it down till it kind of lines up with my pencil sketch, like so. And I might grab this edge loop and scale it. And so you can kind of see how I can change the scale of this. I'm kind of getting that tapered shape, like so. Um, maybe I'll grab this edge. Um, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and just crease all of these, I think. I'm going to. And just do a bunch of these. I'll say crease just to save some time. Say okay. Um, and I can bring this one down. So I just started with you know seven segments um, and then I can just come in and move these down to where they need to be and then maybe scale them. And so I'm using this napkin sketch or this pencil sketch to kind of help me with my design. So you can kind of see I'll get like so. I'll say okay. Um, let me do, let me work on the top of this model real quick and I can turn my canvases off at any time just to you know simplify things. So let me just crease these edges. Um, let me grab all those real quick. Oops. And crease them. And I'll say okay. Okay, so now I can turn my canvas back on. I'll look at the front view. And I'm going pretty quick, I apologize uh, for that, but I just kind of want to show you the uh, the idea here. Um, and then I can just move this, this guy up, like so. And then finally I have um, this edge here. We'll move up. Again, kind of trying to line up with those pencil lines. And then lastly, um, I bring this guy up a little bit and scale it down and we should see now we're kind of following the the shape of this you know mouthwash bottle so pretty quickly I got that view there now I'm gonna to turn to the side or to the right side and I can see that I need to select um, these edges here and let's scale them in a 2d fashion so you can kind of say I can make it narrower to kind of match this shape over here okay and then we are good and done so I'll say finish form and pretty quickly I was able to create this you know this Listerine bottle or whatever it is it still has some curvature to it going around um, but I was able to use my existing canvases or my sketch if you want to call this a sketch, it's a napkin sketch or pencil sketch to create the overall shape of this bottle. And you could even come in here and say, I'm not going to do the top part, but I could shell this guy out. And literally in just a matter of moments, you know, we have created a, a product, you know, that hollow on the inside. I could take this into rendering, add some plastic um, appearance to it, and we're good to go. Okay, so with that, hopefully you learned a couple tips and tricks with bringing in other people's data, 2D data, such as DWG, DXF, or even just regular sketches that somebody might have, you know, created an idea and they say, hey, can you make this for me? You could actually, you know, scan that in and kind of use that as a reference, especially on organic freeform shapes. So uh, with that, I want to thank Angelo for helping answer the chat. Um, if you have any ideas for future live streams that you'd like to see, make sure you throw them into the comments, not the chat per se, but the comments in the, the YouTube video after it posts. Um, make sure you subscribe. And if you like this, give us a thumbs up and hope to see you on a future live stream. Thank you.